Hey guys, welcome back to the third video for my Dan A4 version 3 Ryzen RTX build. In this video, we're going to be dialing in CPU and GPU settings. If you haven't done so already, check out the unboxing video as well as the build video for this unit. As you can see here, we've made one hardware change since the build video. We added a Noctua low profile fan below the power supply as an intake, making it its only case fan. As we get into dialing and settings here, we're just going to go over the BIOS settings for the CPU that I settled on. I did not want to settle for stock performance, but I knew overclocking was going to be a challenge and very much cooling limited in this case. I did start out at a 300 megahertz overclock to 3.7 gigahertz, but even with undervolting, I was hitting temperatures near or at 100 degrees Celsius. So as you can see here, we are at the 3.6 multiplier, giving us 3.6 gigahertz or 200 megahertz overclock. We're using the DOCP profile. We got our memory set at 3000 megahertz and our CPU voltage we ended up settling at is a 1.050. To test these settings, I used Prime95 blend test as well as OCCT. And I'll just let you guys watch the stress test here in fast forward, get an idea of what temperatures are doing as well as the rest of the CPU stats via hardware info as you can see on the right. And my goal here was to have at least some overclock while having tolerable temperatures and my goal for synthetic benchmarks or stress tests on the CPU was to not have the CPU go beyond 90 degrees Celsius. As you can see in the OCCT benchmark, we hit 92 or 93 briefly, and this was after quite a bit of GPU and CPU stressing uh, with a ambient temperature of about 68 degrees or 20 degrees Celsius. So almost hitting my goal there, but I'm going to call this acceptable because I do not see these temperatures in the real world and other day-to-day -day applications in gaming. Now as we look at the screenshot here for MSI Afterburner, you can see our RTX 2080 and some settings I ended up settling on for this B-Bend chip. Uh, we're running 419-17 drivers as well as maximum power limit. I uh, drop the temperature limit down to 80 degrees Celsius and we settled on a core overclock of 110 and a massive plus 1000 OC on the Samsung memory and we left the fan profile stock so fan curve does what it wants and I am not seeing temperatures above 75 degrees Celsius under load in any of my benchmarks with these settings and just so you guys can see what the 
GTX 2080 is doing here as far as temperature and power draw, etc. I just ran the Unigen Superposition benchmark and just here are some of the stats MSI Afterburner is uh, showing here. On boot up, the GPU fans do spin up, but just at a low speed, not very noticeable at all. And the GPU fans will spin back down to an off position once you get to the login screen. So just to give you a visual representation, here are some thermal images with GPU and CPU at 100% load. Just to give you an idea of where we've got a little bit of heat buildup, I will say the case will get quite toasty to the touch under load. Here we have total power usage at the wall according to our kilowatt P3 power meter. So yes, this power supply is quite overkill for what we're using it here for, but once again, I'm using the excuse that I wanted braided cables and I, I wanted to take advantage of the zero RPM fan at up to 300 watt power draw, which makes this a extremely quiet build at idle or doing basic non-GPU or CPU intensive tasks. Next up here we have some common game benchmarks. I ran all these benchmarks at max settings 2560 by 1440. Didn't bother to do 1080p benchmarks just because this setup would totally crush everything 1080p but this should give you a pretty good idea of what this machine is capable of. Alright guys as I'm wrapping up here just a few few thoughts. I remain very satisfied with this build. It was great experience putting it together. I would recommend it, yes, if you are after this form factor and after this volume of space to work in. However, keep in mind if you are a overclocking enthusiast, you are obviously not going to get maximum performance out of your CPU anything mid-range or up you're going to have to temper your expectations on the overclock you're going to be able to achieve while maintaining low temperatures you may be able to get some slightly higher overclocks and better temperatures if you use a 92 millimeter all-in-one water cooler like the 545 lc but that is a tight fit as i mentioned in the previous build video. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope it was informative. And if you have not already, consider liking the video and subscribing as well. Catch you again next time.